Hi everyone, my name is Sterling Freeman and I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor here at Chapman University. I'm happy to be here today to give you a little bit more information on our institution, tell you about the area that we're in and some of the opportunities that come along with being a student at Chapman. Um, we're sorry that we're not able to host you right now due to everything going on with COVID-19, but we hope that this will be a great resource for you in kind of learning more about Chapman and um, kind of furthering your college search process. So in addition to that, we have two current students here with us today who will be here to answer questions at the end. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and jump in. So a little bit about what we're gonna to cover today. Um, first will be a little bit of an overview of Chapman, talking about the area that we're in, some of our programs, some of that um, more informational stuff. Um, a little bit about timeline and deadlines. So um, come the first semester of your senior year, what you should expect and um, when you should expect to have everything submitted. Um, we'll talk a little bit about required documents. So there will be some things that you're required to submit, some things that will be submitted on your behalf and some things that are optional. So just going a little bit more in depth about all of that. Um, then a little bit about how we review applications. So I know I've been in your position before and I know it can be really stressful and really intimidating. Um, so hopefully demystifying the application process for you by talking a little bit about what we're looking for when we review applications um, and how to make your application as strong as possible. And then lastly, talking about financial aid and um, tuition and scholarships and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Here's a little bit of a campus overview for you. Um, so we're located in Orange, California, which is right in the heart of Orange County. Um, so we've got tons of attractions nearby. We're in a really awesome location where the weather is basically 75 and sunny year round. Um, but we were founded in 1861 and we're currently the third largest private university in California. Um, we have a total um, undergraduate enrollment of about 7,600 about a, grad, a graduate enrollment of about 2,000, um, and we have representation from 49 different states and 82 different countries around the world. So we're a very diverse campus, and it's something that we really pride ourselves on, um, and something that our students seem to really learn a lot from and grow and flourish in. So talking a little bit about our growth the past couple of years. So as you can see, since 2005, we've spiked in the number of applications that we receive yearly. Um, we're, about, we're at about 16,000 a year, and in this last year we had about 16,000 applications. Um, so our student body is constantly growing, um, and we're making sure that we continue to grow um, as an institution, both physically um, and mentally, as our student population grows as well. So with that, we have a lot of campus expansion that's been going on recently. Um, up at the top, you'll see our Keck Science Center. That's where all of our science and engineering classes are held. Um, 40,000 square feet of that center is dedicated to our new engineering school that's starting in the fall of 2021. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got the K, which is one of our new residence halls that's located right on campus, right next to our Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. Um, so it's brand new. It's all apartment style living for our sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, and it's about a five to 10 minute walk from our main campus. So not far at all, um, but nice to get that kind of apartment style living um, right that close to campus. So um, as you can see, like I said, expansion is really big on our minds with, the, with our student uh, population growing as well. So we make sure that we're doing what we can to fit the needs and the wants of our student population as it continues to grow. And as our campus has expanded, so has our rankings. So um, we've moved up from a regional to a national level in the U.S. World and News Report, or World, U.S. News and World Reports um, rankings list. So we're excited about the growth that we've um, already experienced and the growth that's yet to come. A lot of this is attributed to our hands-on learning um, and our small class sizes, and as well as our high research levels on campus. So we're really proud of that. For those of you who haven't been to campus, here's a little bit about our location. Um, so we're located right, like I said, in the heart of Orange County. Um, this is actually a picture of our Orange Circle, which we basically consider an extension of campus. Um, there's a ton of different restaurants and coffee shops and thrift stores and ice cream shops and um, stuff like that located in the circle. So um, a great place to hang out. You'll see students there all throughout the week and all throughout the day, um, whether they're studying or just grabbing a bite to eat. Um, since it is only about a five minute walk from campus, it's super convenient to go in between classes. Um, um, or at the end of your day to go study, however you want to do that. Um, but we really love that, and we love that it, we're so kind of in tune with our community here in Orange. So um, you'll see a lot of community involvement from local community members. Um, here's a picture of one of our homecoming events. So um, 
One thing that's really unique, I think, about Chapman and the community that we have at Chapman is that kind of high touch involvement with our local community. So since we are in a more residential area, um, you'll oftentimes find uh, members of our community coming out to support us in our different events, such as homecoming um, or for philanthropy events and different shows that we have going on on campus. Um, so it's nice that we're able to form those relationships with our community members, especially when it comes time um, to find different jobs and internships while you're at Chapman. So it makes it really nice to have those kind of relationships already formed. Um, but yeah, community is a huge part of Chapman, whether it's our local community or the community within the university. Um, so we always have a ton of different stuff going on on campus. Like I said, philanthropy events, shows, um, different kind of tablings. Um, you'll never really find campus dead. So um, it's a weird time right now since campus isn't open. But um, as a student on campus, you can expect to always find something to do and always for there to be something going on. A little bit more of a visual representation of where Chapman is located. Um, so as you can see, we're right there in that middle, the big red letters, um, Chapman University. And then we've got Angel Stadium and the Duck Stadium about five minutes away. So if you like baseball or you like hockey, it's super convenient and super easy to go see a game. Um, we also do a number of different events there for students where we'll do free tickets or discounted tickets. Um, so there's always something to do. Um, at nighttime to go see a game. We're also really close to Disneyland. So we're about 10 minutes from Disneyland, um, which is super fun for all you Disney fanatics. Um, but it's also great in terms of employment. Um, so Disney's actually the second highest employer of Chapman students, um, with Chapman being the first. Um, but a lot of students will spend a lot of time at, Ch at Disneyland, whether it's for an internship or maybe a post-graduation job, um, or if they're just working there kind of to make some extra money while they're attending Chapman. So you can work like working the rides, working and performing in the shows, um, or if you just want to get a pass and spend some time hanging out there. I know when I was a student my first year, I got a Disney pass and I would go just in between classes. So I'd have like a two hour break and I'd run to Disneyland and I'd ride like Space Mountain twice and then I'd go back to class. So it's really cool having something so fun right at our fingertips. Um, and then we also have the mountains really close by. So about an hour and a half away, you'll find Big Bear Mountain. Um, so if you like to ski or you like to snowboard, or maybe you just like the snow in general, um, super easy and convenient to get there. And then we have beaches about 20 to 30 minutes away also. So Newport Beach, Huntington Beach, and Laguna Beach are all within a 30 mile uh, or 30 minute drive. So you oftentimes we'll find students after class going to the beach um, or maybe in between classes if you have a big enough break. Um, and then there's a ton of different cool little shops and downtown areas and main streets to hang out on around those parts. So um, one thing that's really unique about our location, which I don't think a lot of people can say, um, is that we're one of the few places where you can go from snow to sand all in one day. So we'll have a lot of students kind of going up and skiing in the morning or snowboarding in the morning and then coming down and hitting the beach in the afternoon. So super unique, but also super fun if you're into the snow and the beaches. Um, but in addition to that, we also have Los Angeles about 35 miles away. So we have a Metrolink stop right on campus, takes you to Los Angeles in about 45 minutes. Um, and it's really nice because then you avoid the hassle of traffic. Um, but if you are looking to do maybe an internship in Los Angeles, a lot of our students will take the Metrolink up and then they can work on stuff while they're on their way up there and not have to worry about driving. Um, or if you just want to go explore LA for the day or during the weekend, um, it's also super convenient to do that. And then we also have San Diego, 91 miles north. So about two hours uh, south of us, sorry, south. Um, we also have the Metrolink stop that takes you to San Diego. So if you wanna go explore San Diego, go to the beach down there, or just kind of go visit and walk around a really cool area to explore also. So as you can see, there's tons to do in the area. You'll never get bored, whether it's with events on campus or off campus, um, you'll always be able to find something to do. And it's really nice because in the whole Orange County, LA area, we have a little over 85,000 different employers and companies. So um, makes it really nice when it comes time to get internships or to find jobs um, because we're so well connected with that community like I was talking about that a lot of these employers will think Chapman first. And so what I mean by that is that when they go to hire interns or go to hire um, graduates from university, they will look towards Chapman first. So this is just a small number of all the different companies that do think Chapman first. And so since we're able to establish such strong bonds with the companies in the area, um, it's really nice for our students who are graduating or looking for internships to secure something a little bit more easily because these companies know the, the quality of Chapman students and they want to hire Chapman students. So um, it really kind of puts you at an advantage if you're looking to stay in that area. But we also have connections with um, employers all all around, all around the globe. So it's really awesome. And we have a really great career professional development center here to help you find those internships and find those jobs. They're there to help you kind of craft and perfect your resume and your cover letters. Um, they'll do mock interviews with you if you have anything coming up. So they're there to help you in any way that they can. Um, and they want to do what they can to help you get those jobs and internships. 
And here's just a small pool of some of the alumni that we have. So at Chapman, we have over 50,000 different current alumni, um, and that number is constantly growing. But these are four really notable ones. So um, the ones I like to always point out is Ross and Matt Duffer, the Duffer brothers. They are actually the ones who created the Netflix hit series, um, Stranger Things. So they came from our film school, Dodge, um, and they went on to do incredible things, along with the other three people who are on this um, slide right here. They've all moved on to do incredible things, and we have alumni all over the globe just doing really awesome things and using their Chapman education and the resources and the network that they've created while they were at Chapman to be successful in their, in their specific industries. So really proud of them. A little bit of an admissions timeline for you. So August 1st is going to be where our, when our Common App opens up. So August 1st of your senior year is when you can get started on that Common Application. Um, and then we'll have two different deadlines for you to submit your application. The first is going to be November 1st, and that's going to house our early action and our early decision deadlines. While they sound super similar, they're actually very different. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in the next slide. But just keeping in mind that if you want to apply early, November 1st is going to be your deadline for that. Um, and if you do apply early, you'll hear back around mid-December. So at that time, you'll get your admission decision. Um, and then if you were accepted, you'll also get your scholarship award letter if you are awarded a merit scholarship. So we always encourage students to apply for that early deadline um, just because it's really no sweat off your back and there's only benefits and I guess associated with it. Um, so you'll find out a little bit earlier. It gives you a little bit more time to weigh your financial aid and your scholarships and figure out what you want to do before that May 1st deposit deadline. Um, and then there's also three different things that we can do at that time. So we can either accept you out of early, we can roll you, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, it basically just means that we want to see a little bit more information. So we're going to look for those seventh semester grades or any new test scores, maybe if you're taking an SAT or an ACT um, after that November 1st deadline. Um, and then also in case we want to bump you up in scholarship brackets. So maybe you're right at the cusp of a scholarship and we're hoping that those new test scores or those new grades coming in can help bump you up to the next one. Those are just a couple of the reasons why we might roll you. But again, not a bad thing at all. We just want the chance to um, re-review you with our regular pool. And then we can also deny you at that time. Uh, but January 15th is going to be that second deadline if you're not applying early. And that's a regular decision deadline. Um, and then if you apply for that, you're going to hear back around mid-March. And again, you'll get if you're accepted, you'll get your scholarship award letter at that time as well. And then just keeping in mind that May 1st national deposit deadline. So all the universities in the U.S. have the same deposit deadline. Um, so just making sure that you are ready to go by then um, and you have all your decisions made by then. So jumping into a little bit more detail about those deadlines, like I said, early action and early decision sound super similar. They're actually very, very different. Um, so early action is a non-binding application, whereas early decision is a binding application. So what that means is basically saying, um, if you're admitted to Chapman, you're committed to coming. So I know a lot of times financial aid and scholarships and all of that can play a big factor in where you decide to attend your attend university. Um, and so if that's the case, we encourage you to maybe go for that early action deadline instead of that early decision deadline. But if you're not too worried about financial aid and scholarships, um, and you know that Chapman's where you want to be, and you can absolutely see yourself spending four years here, where your dream school, then early decision is a great option for you. And then keeping in mind, if you are applying to one of those priority programs, so film production, screen acting, theater performance, pharmacy, or dance, um, we're going to ask you to turn in your application by November 1st. This is because um, with all those programs, there's a creative supplement that's attached to it that you have to submit. Um, and it takes a little bit longer for us to review because it goes through the departments as well. So we just want to make sure that we have ample time to review your application and get your decision to you in a timely manner. Um, so again, if you're applying to any of those programs, making sure that you have your application in by November 1st. And then again, that non-binding regular decision deadline is January 15th. So jumping into some of the required documents. Um, so first of all, there's going to be documents that you submit. Um, it, within this, you've got the Common App, um, which is a little bit more generic, a little bit more cut and dry. It's going to ask like demographic questions, ask a little bit about the activities you've been involved with um, throughout high school. It's going to ask um, for your personal statement. And that's this whole part of the Common App is going to get sent to all the different universities that you're applying to. So make sure that no matter how much you love Chapman, you're maybe saving your love for Chapman and expressing that for your Chapman supplemental questions at the end. Um, just because if you're applying to another university and they see all your love for Chapman throughout that Common App portion of it, they 
might not be too happy about that. So that's why we have those Chapman supplemental questions that are attached to it um, for you to be able to express how much you're interested in Chapman and for us to get a little, to know a little bit more about you and your personality. So um, within those Chapman questions, it's going to be questions like, what's your first choice major and why are you interested in pursuing this major? Um, do you have a second choice major you'd like to be considered for? It'll ask questions like, why Chapman? So why do you want to be here? Um, I always really encourage students to be as specific as possible during those questions. Uh, for example, during Y Chapman, it's always great to talk about something that you learned today um, in, in a session like this, um, or if you visited campus, something that you saw or heard while you were on campus or an experience that you've had being on campus, um, or really just talking about the specifics of a program that you're interested in. Um, really, as long as you're being specific, that's what we like to see in that question. Um, and then at the end of that Chapman supplemental part, um, we've got just some short answer questions that are meant to be more fun and less stressful, um, meant to be kind of just to take a weight off your shoulders um, and so that we can get to know a little bit more about you and your personality. So questions like what meal would you cook the admissions team while they were reviewing your application? So again, a little bit more fun, a little bit more lighthearted. Um, we don't want you to take them too seriously, but do remember to be appropriate during them. And then again, if you are applying to any program with a creative supplement, you'll have that creative supplement that you need to submit as well. So it'll vary from program to program and you can find all that information on the various program websites. Next, there's gonna be documents you need to request. So that's gonna be things like your transcripts. So from your high school counselor, you'll have them send over your transcripts. Um, I always recommend just kind of following up with them and keeping in touch with them to make sure that everything's getting sent over in a timely manner. Um, but you won't have to submit those yourself. Your counselor will submit those for you. And then letter of recommendation. So with that, we require one letter of recommendation. We say we'll read up to three. Um, and we ask that you try to limit it at three. Otherwise, sometimes it just gets a little bit more redundant. We have thousands of applications we have to get through. So um, one letter of recommendation is required. And that letter of recommendation has to come from a person of academia. So um, a high school teacher a high school counselor, a principal, really anybody can, who can attest to your work ethic within a classroom environment. The other two letters of recommendation can come from anywhere. So it can be a sports coach or a supervisor at a part-time job or a mentor um, or a teacher again if you want it to. But just remembering that that first letter of recommendation has to be from an academic source. And then lastly, in terms of what you're going to request is going to be your school report form. So this is a form that you'll likely never see. Um, your counselor will send it along with your high school transcripts. But basically, it just details to us um, what your high school environment has been like. So the last four years where you've been studying, the size of the high school you've been at, um, how many APs and honor cl honors classes are offered, and everything like that. So just in case we don't know your school super well, just to give us a little bit more information and context on where you've been the last four years. And then lastly is that optional section. So your SAT and ACT scores will be optional. Um, you're not required to submit them and you won't be penalized if you don't submit them. But should you want to submit them, we're more than happy to look over them and factor them into your review as well. Um, so just keeping in mind that you're able to submit those SAT and ACT scores, but you're not required to if you don't want to. Here's a little bit of an overview for our recent fall 2020 application period. So we had a little over 14,000 first year applicants and we admitted a little over half of them. The average GPA was about a 3.85 and that is weighted, but keep in mind it's weighted on a um, on a Chapman scale, I guess. So we basically, we take your classes and we use your core classes. So history, English, math, foreign language, and sciences. Um, and then we'll take in any elective classes that you've taken that are relevant to the program you're applying to. So for example, if you're applying to our film program and you've taken film classes throughout high school, we'll factor those into that reweighted GPA as well. Um, and then we'll add weight for any AP classes, any IB higher level classes, or any dual enrollment classes that you've taken. So just keeping in mind um, what you see as a weighted GPA on your transcript might differ a little bit from the weighted GPA that we have once we reweight it. Um, average SAT was about a 1318 and average ACT was about a 29 and then 16% of our um, applicant pool was first generation. So moving on to the fun stuff, what we focus on when we're reviewing applications. Um, there's four kind of main areas that we're looking at when we're reviewing your application, um, but we review very holistically. So it's not one, it's not one specific area that will make or break um, your decision, but basically we want to we want to see the bigger picture. We kind of see your application as a bunch of different puzzle pieces and we're trying to put it together to see that bigger picture. Um, so this is kind of how we look at it and what we do when we're reviewing. So first we look at your academics in context. And so what that means is kind of using that school report form that I was just talking about to see kind of what you've been doing, how you've been challenging yourself and how well you've been performing in an academic environment. Um, so how many AP classes you've taken or honors classes if they're offered um, and just seeing how well you've done in those classes. And then next we look at your area of study. So what 
program you're applying into. So um, for example, if you're applying into our business program, our business program is a little bit more math intensive. So we're gonna look a little bit more heavily at those math classes that you've taken, how well you've done in those and how much you've challenged yourself in those. Um, and then at your math test scores, if you do submit them. So just to see how well you're prepared for the program of study that you're looking to go into and how those academics that you've taken all throughout high school have prepared you for college level curriculum. Um, next, we look at the community impact piece. So um, if you have been to Chapman, you've probably noticed it, but if you haven't um, been to Chapman, then you'll see that community is a really, really big aspect of our university. So um, all across campus, we always have things going on, people tabling for different inv uh, involvements that they're a part of, and just people all across campus getting involved. So our hope is that the students that we're admitting, um, we're going to kind of follow in those footsteps and get involved on campus and have their voices heard. And it's a really great way for us to tell that by seeing what activities you've been a part of um, all throughout high school. So hopefully you haven't just been going to class and then going home and then going back to class the next day. Hopefully you've been involved in some sort of extracurriculars such as sports or volunteer work or community service. Maybe you've had like a part-time job. Um, maybe you started a business, who knows? Uh, but we want to see that you've been involved within your community, whether it's within your school or within your larger community around you in the area that you are going to high school in. So we love to see breadth, depth, and leadership within that involvement. So seeing that you're involved in a number of different things and also that you've been involved in those things for a, a more consistent period of time. So instead of being involved for 20 and 20 different things for a week each, we'd love to see that you were involved in maybe like 10 things for a couple years at a time. Um, and then seeing that you're taking on leadership roles in those different involvements that you're a part of. And then lastly, um, just that Chapman fit piece. So basically what that means is we want to make sure that you know why you're applying to Chapman. We want to make sure that we're a good university for you and that you want to be here. You've done your research. Um, you know that there's programs that you're interested in. And you can really see yourself on Chapman's campus. Um, and then kind of on the other side of that, making sure that we're a good fit for you in terms of the support and the programs and the resources that we have to offer you throughout your four years and beyond that. Because we really want to make sure that you're going to be as successful as possible um, and that we have the ability to make sure that we can offer you that as well. So like I said, we review very holistically. Um, it's not just one area that makes or breaks it, but we are looking at all these different areas um, and being as specific as you can about how much you want to be a Chapman and how much you love Chapman in your Chapman supplemental portion is something that we love to see as well. So jumping into the cost of attendance and financial aid and scholarships, our estimated cost of attendance is about $75,000 a year. Um, so that includes tuition, all your living expenses, so your dorm room and your meal plan, um, and then books and just any other kind of costs that we expect to be associated with your academic year here at Chapman. So um, what's nice about that is about 81% of students don't pay that full price thanks to financial aid and scholarships. So in the realm of financial aid, we have three different types of financial aid. The first is going to be your merit-based scholarship. So these are based on basically your academic performance throughout high school. Um, so we factor in your grades and the rigor that you've taken. And then if you are submitting test scores, we look at those as well. Um, but these merit-based scholarships range anywhere from $10,000 to $32,000 a year. And if you're awarded one as an incoming freshman, it'll follow you all four years as long as you maintain a 2.75 GPA. So not super tough to do, especially with all the different resources that we have on campus. Um, but we automatically review you for these when you apply. So there's no separate application. We just do it when we're reviewing your application. Um, and then, like I said, we'll let you know when we send you your award letter or your acceptance letter, sorry. Um, and then we also have departmental scholarships. So these aren't found in all the different departments. They're found in a few here and there, um, typically within our sciences, our film school, um, anything visual or performing arts related, and then in our uh, engineering, sciences, and then any like English um, creative writing kind of those programs as well. So those typically hover around $5,000 a year. Um, and same thing, you're automatically considered for it when you apply, and it'll follow you all four years if you're awarded one as a freshman. And then one thing that's nice about our scholarships is that you are able to stack your scholarships. So if you come in with $10,000 in outside scholarship money, we won't take away from your merit scholarships or your departmental scholarships because of that. You're able to stack it all on top, which makes it that much easier to kind of meet that cost of attendance number. And then lastly, we have need-based aid. So if you are from the, uh, if you are a U.S. citizen, you can apply for the FAFSA, which is a federal uh, federal assistance, basically, um, and it's need-based. So we encourage all students to fill out the FAFSA if you're eligible to. Um, even if you don't think you're going to get anything, it doesn't hurt to fill it out. It takes about 15, 20 minutes, and you never know. You could get some loans or some uh, some grants or some work study options um, to help you kind of cover the cost of attendance. So. 
like I said, 81% of students benefit from financial aid and our average need base. So anything through the FAFSA um, financial aid package is going to be about $28,000 a year. So now I'm going to have uh, Kaya and Mateo join us for a quick student Q&A um, to answer some questions that you guys might have um, regarding Chapman. If you guys want to just start by maybe introducing yourselves, saying what year you are, where you're from, and what you're studying at the university. Kaya, you want to start? Sure. So hi, guys. My name is Kaya. I'm a freshman this year at Chapman. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm studying advertising and public relations. And hi, my name is Mateo. I am a senior biology major from San Jose, California. Awesome. So let's start with, um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about housing and roommates? So how the ha housing application works and how they place you with roommates and maybe your experiences a little bit with rooming and boarding at Chapman? Yeah, for sure. So right before school starts um, in the summer months, you will be able to essentially fill out a quiz type of document that um, will ask you some questions about your different living habits and preferences. Um, and then they will use that information to then pair you with a roommate that is in your same college. So um, you might have a roommate that's your same major or maybe like for me, I was um, at NPR, but my other roommates were creative producing um, because they were also in Dodge. So I really enjoyed that. I thought it was awesome to be able to have um, some roommates and also people within my dorm that were taking some of the same introductory courses as me um, and people that I could definitely lean on and um, rely on for help with classes and different things like that. I had a really positive experience. Yeah, and I can to expand on that a little bit. That was really advantageous for me when I was first coming to Chapman because obviously I was super scared that I was going away from home and um, I was worried I was going to know anyone in my classes. But um, you have that orientation week where you start to know people from where you start to get to know people from your specific major. Um, and then you also do have your floor as well that you're also really close with because you've gotten to know them for the past week. Um, so by the time you start uh, your first classes within your major, you already have like four or five connections of people that either was in your orientation group or live in your floor as well. Um, and one fun fact is they also have one completely for undecided students as well. So for orientation groups, as well as a floor as well. So if you feel like you're in that category, don't worry. There's other, you're still going to be living with other people that are in the same boat as you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, now, if you guys just want to talk a little bit about the class registration process and all the resources that Chapman has to make sure that students graduate in four years and um, resources just for planning and registering for all your classes and everything. For sure. So, um, again, kind of in the summer months, Chapman will send out a tutorial to all students that will show them how to register for classes. And along with that, you'll also receive information um, about your different academic advisors on campus um, that you can reach out to. And Chapman definitely encourages students to reach out to these academic advisors because they're a fantastic resource um, to help you either plan classes for the next four years or just choose what's gonna work well for you, especially in your first semester at Chapman. Um, so for me, that was super beneficial being from Minnesota. Um, I was a little nervous at first and it was very helpful to be able to connect with someone at Chapman that cared and wanted to make sure that I um, got all the classes that I wanted for my first semester. And then once I got to campus, I continued to work with them um, and then my major and minor specific advisors as well to continue planning courses for second semester and the years to come as well. And for me, being a senior, I changed my major twice and my minor three times. So I definitely took advantage of those academic advisors and program advisors. Um, I was really close with my program advisor because I was always um, wanting to make sure that I was signing up for every single biology class that I needed to sign up for. Um, and my academic advisors was uh, would always help me anytime I made a switch of a major or a minor. Um, and so Despite those, all those switches that I've made during my Chapman career, I, I'm still graduating within four years at Chapman. Um, so that kind of just shows that they really do keep you on track. Um, and obviously, you do have to sign up for some of those appointments with your academic or program advisors, but they're always going to be there, and they always have office hours um, that are going to be open for students to just walk in um, and get that advising that they need to. Definitely. Awesome. And then just last question, do you guys want to talk a little bit about what you've been involved with at Chapman? and 
kind of some tips and the best way to get involved with stuff at Chapman? Yeah. So um, the first week of classes, they have a really big club fair, um, takes over the whole piazza and different parts of campus. It's really awesome because you can go around and see what kind of things might interest you. Um, and clubs and organizations are a fantastic way to get involved on campus, meet new people, meet people from different grades and different things like that. So I definitely joined some clubs my first week and it was um, one of the better decisions I've made. Um, it really allowed me to meet a lot of people that maybe I wouldn't have met in my classes. Um, and I made so many great friends from my different clubs. So um, quickly, I'm involved in feminism club, I'm involved in photography club and um, university program board. Um, and University Program Board puts on different events throughout the year, and it's so much fun to be a part of um, something on campus while also meeting people, and yeah, I love it. Um, and for me, as I first started Chapman, the very first thing I got involved in um, was after the student involvement fair that Kai was talking about. Um, I saw, excuse me, I saw that there was an acapella group so I joined Men of Harmony, the all-male acapella group on campus, and then eventually became president of that a few years later. Um, so the club fair is one of the uh, one of the ways that I was able to get involved in one of my favorite extracurriculars at Chapman, which was that experience. Um, and then I also um, went through fraternity rush in the spring semester, and so I was part of a social fraternity as well, or I am part of a social fraternity as well. Um, and I was able to serve as philanthropy coordinator for a semester. Um, which was also a tremendous experience. Um, and then lastly, I also um, did research at Chapman as well. Um, and the way I got involved in that was I just reached out to um, my chemistry professor and I told her that I didn't have any prior knowledge of chemistry or biology because it was my first semester in it. Just reached out to her and I said, I still wanna get involved in some sort of research experience. She just sent me an email of a list of professors I could reach out to. And I reached out to the first one that I thought was interesting and he said, um, as long as I'm passionate about the project, he's happy to have me on board. Um, and so we were actually published for the work that we had been doing for the past year in that breast cancer research lab. Um, so those are kind of, um, that's kind of a representative of the endless opportunities that you might find at Chapman um, and all the professors and other students, um, your classmates are all there to help you and, and get involved and all that stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit more about Chapman and to join us for this presentation. If you do have any further questions, please feel free to reach out, even if you just want to say hi and get to know your admissions counselor a little bit more. Like I said, we do have different counselors assigned to different territories across the globe. So if you're curious who yours might be, you can email our general inbox. It's admit at chapman.edu. Um, or if you have general questions, you can send them there as well. Um, for all of our international students, we do have a separate inbox. It's intladmit at chapman.edu. Um, and one thing to keep in mind for our international students is we do require an additional international supplement form. This is comprised of a passport photo, passport information, and a verification of funds. So feel free to get in touch with us about any questions regarding that. We look forward to getting in touch and getting to know you and reading all of your applications in the fall. Have a great rest of your day pause up and please again reach out if you have any questions at all. Thank you.